tick, tick, tick. Hearing this story makes me think of something tiny in cute little tick. Did you know that this tiny creature could cause such disease? But hopefully, the disease it causes has a high survival rate. Less than 1% of all cases result in death. This disease is called anaplasmosis. Anaplasmosis, which was previously known as human granulocytic ehrlichiosis, is a tick-borne bacterial infection caused by Anaplasma phagocytophilum. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the most likely carriers of Anaplasma phagocytophilum are the black-legged tick or Ixodes scapularis and the western black-legged tick or Ixodes pacificus. Of the many different tick species found throughout the world, only a select few bite and transmit disease to people. Of the ticks that bite people, different species of the ticks transmit different diseases. This map shows the general distribution of human biting ticks in the contagious United States. Populations of ticks may be found outside shaded areas. Naturally occurring populations of the ticks described below do not occur in Alaska. However, the brown dog tick occurs in Hawaii. Note that adult ticks are the easiest to identify and male and female ticks of the same species may look different. Nymphal and larval ticks are very small and may be hard to identify. For the causative agents, Anaplasmosis is an illness caused by bacteria that, that is spread by ticks. The bacteria are called Anaplasma phagocytophilum. For the mode of transmission via tick bites, Anaplasma phagocytophilum is primarily spread to people by the bite of an infected tick. In the United States, the bacteria is carried by the black-legged tick in the northeast and mid-eastern United States and the western black-legged tick along the west coast. Remember that a tick needs to stay attached for 4 to 24 hours to transmit the bacteria, so removing a tick soon after the bite occurs can prevent transmission. Via blood transmission, in rare cases, Anaplasma phagocytophilum has been spread by blood transmission. Black leg ticks live for about 2 to 3 years. Most of their life is spent out in the environment rather than on a host or in a host's nest. During their entire lifetime, they will only have up to three blood meals. This picture that you are seeing in your screen right now shows that the life cycle begins when the female lays eggs. As the egg matures, it develops into a larva, then a nymph, and finally an adult male or female will develop. In the spring of their first year, eggs hatch into larvae. Larvae prefer to feed on the blood from small mammals like mice and birds. Larvae have one feeding that molt into, th into nymphs and rest until the next spring. During this first meal, the larva may pick up a disease agent like the bacteria that causes Lyme disease while feeding on a small mammal such as a white-footed mouse. Late in the spring of their second year, Nymphs take their second feeding. Nymphs aren't as picky with their choice of the host and will feed on blood from small or large mammals, such as white-tailed deer or humans. At this time, if the nymph is infected with a disease agent, then it could spread the disease agent to a human or animal that it feeds on. In the fall of their second year, nymphs that have had a blood meal will molt into adult male or female tick. Adults prefer to feed on large mammals, such as white-tailed deer or humans. This picture shows each of the life stages of the black-legged tick, adult female, adult male, nymph, and larva. It also shows the relative sizes and patterns of the black-legged tick, lone star tick, and American dog tick. For the signs and symptoms, anaplasmosis typically begin within 1 to 2 weeks after the bite of an infective tick. Tick bites are usually painless and many people do not remember being bitten. See your healthcare provider if you become ill after having been bitten by a tick or having been in the woods or in areas with high brush where ticks commonly live. For the early illness, 
Early signs and symptoms are usually mild or moderate and may include fever or chills, severe headache, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. For delayed illness, rarely if treatment is delayed or if there are other medical conditions present, anaplasmosis can cause severe illness. Prompt treatments can reduce your risk of developing severe illness. The signs and symptoms of severe illness can include respiratory failure, bleeding problems, organ failure, and even death. Risk factors for severe illness Delayed treatments Age Being older puts you at risk Weakened immune system Because people with weakened immune systems, such as those receiving some cancer treatments, individuals with advanced HIV infection, prior organ transplants, or people taking some medications, are at risk for severe illness. For the diagnosis, the diagnosis of anaplasmosis involves undergoing a physical examination. The person should let their doctor know if they have recently removed a tick from their skin or have recently spent outdoors where ticks are common. Anaplasmosis can be hard to diagnose. This is because several other illnesses have similar symptoms to those of anaplasmosis. Therefore, a doctor may not check for anaplasmosis at first. For the clinical diagnosis, early recognition and treatment is the key. Maintain a high level of clinical suspicion for anaplasmosis or other tick-borne diseases in case of nonspecific febrile illness of unknown origin, particularly during spring and summer months when ticks are most active. Early recognition and presumptive treatment is important to prevent severe illness. Always take a thorough patient history including recent tick bite, exposure to areas where ticks are commonly found including wooden areas or brushy areas with high grasses and leaf bleeders. Travel history For the laboratory diagnosis, diagnostic tests should be run on those with illness clinically compatible with anaplasmosis. However, treatment should not be delayed on the basis of diagnostic testing. Laboratory diagnosis includes PCR, serology, persistent antibodies, blood smear microscopy, IHC, and culture. For the treatment of the anaplasmosis, antibiotics are the typical treatment of anaplasmosis. The symptoms tend to reduce within 24 hours of starting an antibiotic regimen. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend doxycycline to treat anaplasmosis. Health teaching on disease prevention and control. The best prevention method is to take precautions against coming into contact with ticks. If someone sustains a tick bite, they should immediately and completely remove it from their body. Removing the tick can prevent transmission. Health teaching on nursing priorities in the care of the patients. For the nursing interventions for anaplasmosis, first, plan care to provide adequate rest, Ask patient about possible drug allergies before administering antibiotics. Administer analgesics and antipyretics as ordered. If the patient has arthritis, help him with range of motion and strengthening exercises but avoid overexerting him. Monitor the patient's vital signs, especially his temperature. Watch for signs and symptoms of complications such as cardiovascular or neurologic dysfunction and arthritis. Monitor the effectiveness and administered medication. Instruct the patient to take antibiotic medications as prescribed. Urge the patient to return for follow-up checkup care and to report recurrent or new symptoms to the physician. Inform the patient and his family about ways to prevent anaplasmosis.